jobs. There was no plumbing, no water, no electricity. Everything was wood stoves, all that stuff, kerosene lamps, and outdoor johns. And I thought when I was little, well, we had the nicest one there was. Most everybody else had to go way outdoors. In the back of the shed in Grandma's house was our outhouse. And she always kept it painted pretty shades of blue and gray. And uh, there was a row of hooks along the wall with initial over them. And each one of those has your towel hanging on it. And that's one you used. Because there was always a little wash basin and stand in there and water. And in the winter, she had a little stove in there. And so it was heated. So when kids were playing outdoors, that's where they wanted to go, was in hours. <laughs> and when you left, you put a stick of wood in. And most everybody had seats all the same size. We didn't have one size fits all. We had, you know, if you pick one that fits you. <laughs> so we did have probably the nicest one that there was there. And grandmother had, of course, this whole family living there. She had to do lots and lots of laundry. And she always felt that if you hung things outdoors and let them freeze in the winter, that they, they were whiter. So there would be lines of men's underwear, outdoor underwear, hanging along the line, and they'd be frozen. And she would bring them in late in the day, stand around the kitchen. They looked like an army of people in long underwear. And what pleased us as kids is used to wait and see the different shapes they took as they, as they melted. That was kind of a game. All the feed that came for the animals was in these big cloth sacks. And they used to unravel them. They had printing all over them and different things like Purina chick food and all this sort of thing. And they would wash them and bleach them out and they made their dish towels of them, their pillowcases, sewed them together for the sheets. And I can remember as little girls, all the little girls had their underwear made of them. We used to have a game when we'd go to school because it didn't all wash out the first time. So if you had chick feed on your butt, that was okay. <laughs> but the day you had pig feed on it, you got laughed at that day. <laughs> but it, it, she, they made use of everything. They just made use of everything there. So this girl, she was probably about 17. She had a pair of black silk gloves in her purse. So I said to Grandma, gee, I don't have any black silk gloves to wear. She said, well, if you go in my bureau drawer in the corner, you'll find a pair of gloves rolled up. And she said, they're mine, and you can take them, but don't lose them. Be careful of them. So I got the gloves. And when you go on the train then, they weren't like buses, one seat in back of another. The seats were long, and they opened up so the whole family could face each other riding on the train. So we all got on the train, and I watched this girl. She took her gloves very carefully out of her little purse, and she's always made a big issue out of everything. She's getting her gloves on. Of course, they were gloves up to here, and so I said, I'll do what she does, you know. So I'm pushing mine up. Mine kept coming up further than hers did. So I looked, I had my grandmother's black silk stockings. <laughs> so you see, I... It doesn't pay to show off at all. <laughs> Every year, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt would have them make what she called her morning dresses, and she would order four each year. And they all were similar. Most everything was a shirtwaist style. And she called them her morning dresses. They had a special pattern for her. She was a very tall, angular lady, and she liked certain things made a certain way. So they were made there in the factory, but I was privileged to fit them to her because she visited a relative in Glens Falls, and I would go to the house and fit her dresses to her. And she was very nice to me. She was a very, very gracious lady. Everybody that knew her there and her family. They just loved her, and I did too. I think probably 
women work as hard as anybody. I think all the women I've known have had to work hard. All over the years, people worked hard. You people work hard. You know what it is. And you know they say if you want to get anything done, you hold a bunch of women. And we think things are tough if you stop and think of it. If Mary can get her butt up on that donkey in her condition and ride all the way to Bethlehem, the rest of us should be able to handle about anything that comes along. Don't you think so? When I was born, my brother and I were born in the same year, and which made it very difficult for my mother, I'm sure. But my mother gave me to my grandmother. My grandmother practically brought me up until I got old, eight or nine years old, something like that. But my grandmother said to me, she said, whatever happens in your life, so I was just a little girl, she said, whatever happens in your life, don't ever be unkind to anybody. I don't care how your feelings are hurt. She said, don't let anybody know it. I think that one of the first lessons I learned is to back down, even if you're hurt, it goes by and you haven't said anything. My grandma said, don't ever say anything that hurts anybody's feelings. I think one of the nice things I like about the church is that we enjoy it as it is, and I suppose it does have to go forward in some ways, which I hope it does by increasing membership. And, but I would like people who join the church and come there now to enjoy the same type of relationships and uh, understanding of each other. I would like that to remain. I don't want it to divide up in groups and cliques and things because it, it, my observation of the whole thing is that even though people are different and have different uh, personalities, it's always been noted that they were equal in caring for each other. And I hope that the new people that come in our church see that and become part of it. Because I've enjoyed it all these years. I don't think there's anybody in that church that I couldn't speak of. No, they were glad I spoke with them or sat with them or talked with them, whatever. And, and I feel, even after all these years, even new people in the church welcome me in the mornings that I can go. And I think that it's a good feeling we've all had, and that's one thing I hope never ever changes. And I think maybe that's why even new people felt feel welcome in our group, because people put themselves out for them, put themselves out to get acquainted with them and introduce them to other people. I think the coffee breakfast in the morning after church is one of the best places that we see that. And I hope it never stops. <laughs>